this episode, I will show you how to serve a Rails application using Nginx and Unicorn. This is a great hosting combo used by many large companies such as GitHub and 37signals to host their Rails apps. Here, let me show you how to set it up. Now, normally you would set this up on your production server, but if it's your first time trying this out, I recommend using Vagrant. And I'm going to add on to the virtual box that we created in the previous episode so that we have a nice safe environment to experiment with. So this means we already have Ruby version 192 installed, and that's using Ruby environment. And we also have the shared directory at slash vagrant, which contains our Rails application. So this means I won't be focusing on Capistrano and deployment because our Rails app is already here on our server. I'm just going to focus exclusively on Nginx and Unicorn. Now we can already start this up using bundle exec Rails server, and that will boot it up using Webrick. And you can see by visiting localhost port 3000, we got our application running smoothly here, but it's just running on Webrick. So instead of using Webrick here, let's get this running on Nginx and Unicorn. So let's start by installing Nginx. Now you may want to compile this from source if you want the most recent version, but here I'm just going to use the apt get install version. Let's see what that gives us. You can see this installed, Nginx version 0765, definitely not the most recent version, but it will work for our needs. You can see we now have an Nginx command we can use to start up our server. However, it also installed an initd file that we can use to manage our Nginx server instead as well. Now you could run that initd command directly, or we can interact with it through the service. Just say Nginx, and let's start it up. So you can see that this booted up successfully, and you can see the config file checks out, which is located at etsy slash Nginx. Now our server booted up fine on port 80, but we currently can't access it because we need to tell Vagrant to forward that port. So you can see we are currently only forwarding port 3000, but here let's forward port 80 to 8080 so that we're able to access it on our local host. And then we need to reload Vagrant, so let's first exit out of our box here, and then call Vagrant reload to reload that new config. Now you can see this restarts our virtual machine here, and it will now forward port 80 to 8080 and it automatically starts up Nginx as well because of the initd file. So now when we visit localhost port 8080, you can see it says welcome to Nginx. Yay, it's working. So now that we know Nginx is working, let's take a look at how the configuration is set up. There's the Etsy Nginx directory that we saw earlier that contains the configuration, and the nginx.conf file is the main configuration file that it loads. Now we can pretty much leave these settings at their default, but it's just a good idea to become a little familiar with it. You can see the user we're running Nginx as is www.data, and we have one worker process that's going to start up that can accept a maximum number of connections of 1,024. And we have various other settings here, which you can check out. Now a good resource for understanding these settings is the Nginx wiki here. You can see there's a module section, and if we go in there, we can have a lot of different links to the various modules, and if we go under a section like main, we can see the various uh, main configuration settings that you can look up and see the documentation on. Now be sure to check out the various comp files this includes as well. So there's a MIME types comp file that it includes. You can see anything under the conf D directory and anything under the sites enabled directory. And that's where you put your site specific configuration. So if we go inside of that sites enabled directory here, you can see that there's one file in here called default, and that's actually a symbolic link to the site's available directory. And if we take a look at that default file here, you can see it contains the configuration for that welcome to Nginx page that we saw earlier. Now you may want to use this file as a template for your application's config, but here I'm just going to create our application's Nginx config from scratch. Now I like to keep all this configuration inside of the Rails app itself and then symlink the file to the proper location when it gets on the server. But you may want to structure this differently depending on how your deployment is set up. So here I'm going to add this to my config directory and make a new file here called nginx.conf. So I'll start off by making a server block here, which is sort of like a virtual host in Apache if you're familiar with that. Oh, by the way, I'm getting the syntax highlighting here by using the Nginx bundle here, which I'll link to in the show notes. And then I will tell this to listen on port 80, 
And I'm also going to pass in a call to default here to tell it to use the server by default if it can't find a matching server name. Because another option you can pass here is server name and you can give it the domain name you want to match, such as example.com. And that way, if that host name is passed in, then it will match that to the server. But since we're just on our local host here, I'm just going to keep this commented out and just use a default here. And we also need to pass in our root directory here to tell it where to find the static files, which will be in vagrant slash public, which is where our Rails application is located. So this is really the bare minimum config to get us started. Let's try this out and see if it works. So now inside of the sites enabled directory here on the server, we can remove the default server here and then symlink up the one at vagrant slash config slash nginx.conf and let's call it to do. Let's check that out and make sure that it works. It looks good. So now we just have to restart our nginx server with that command. Looks like it restarted successfully. Now let's try it out. So now you can see when we visit localhost 8080, you can see we get our welcome aboard page. So it looks like our index.html file is being read properly. However, anything dynamically generated by Rails of course won't work because our Rails server is currently offline. You can see that the image doesn't work with the asset pipeline in Rails 3.1 and our application environment we get 404 not found because that is what's returned by nginx when it tries to access a page which is not a static file. So now we need to adjust our nginx config to pass requests off to our Rails application. But we don't want to pass every request, only the ones that don't have a static file because we want to keep nginx serving the static files. And so we can do this by first trying the static file and we can do that by calling try files. And then we can pass in various locations here for it to try. And we can use the URI variable here, which will be the path that the user is passing in in the URL. And let's try the index.html page first and see if that exists and return it. Otherwise, we'll see if the URI file itself exists as a static file and then return that. And then if those don't exist, let's fall back to our Rails application. And we can handle that through what's called a named location. And so let's call this unicorn as a named location. And so we can make that named location called unicorn. And inside of here, we need to tell it to pass it off to the unicorn server. We could do that with a call to proxy pass. But we don't have unicorn set up yet, so let's first just pass this off to Webrick to get it working. So that's at localhost port 3000. And then we'll need to restart uh, Nginx and make sure that the config file checks out. Looks like that's working. And then we can just boot up the Rails server here, get it working. So now when we reload the localhost 8080 here, you can see that it looks like it's working because our image loaded and we're able to communicate with our Rails application. Yay! Now let's see what happens when we kill our Rails server and that means Nginx won't have anything to communicate with. And now when we reload our page here and try to visit our Rails application, you can see we get 502 bad gateway because it's unable to access our Rails app. Now when there's an error like this, you probably don't want to just show the Nginx error to your users, but instead use the 500 HTML page that's inside of your Rails application. And to do that, you can just add this line into your Nginx config file, which will tell it for all the various 500 errors that it might receive, it'll just render out the 500 HTML page in your Rails app. And so now if we try to visit any page which would trigger a 500 error because our Rails app is down, you can see we get our 500 HTML page that's in a Rails app rendered out. Now there are a number of other settings we can change in this nginx config file, but let's shift gears here for a minute and focus on getting Unicorn up and running. Now if you aren't very familiar with Unicorn, I highly recommend you read GitHub's blog post on Unicorn. It contains a lot of great information on the advantages it provides and also some details on how to get it set up in your application. The first step is to go to your gem file and add Unicorn there. Looks like there's already a commented out section here for adding Unicorn, so we'll just uncomment that. And then inside of my virtual machine here, I will run the bundle command to install it. There we go, now with Unicorn installed, let's add a configuration file to tell it how to run our application. So I'll add a new file here under the config directory called unicorn.rb, and Ruby is used for Unicorn's config files. And I'll just paste in some code here for this configuration, 
Basically, the first thing we do here is set our working directory to the root of our Rails application, which is at slash vagrant. Then we specify our PID file path, and then our log file, and then we call listen. And then this, we can either pass a path to a socket like we're doing here, or you can pass just a number and pass in such as 3000, and that will be the port it will listen on. And then we specify to use, let's say, two worker processes, and this is how many Rails instances it will boot up. And then we set the timeout to 30, which means that if the Rails application doesn't respond within 30 seconds, it will quit it and then boot it up again. Now, if you want more information on the various config options you can pass into Unicorn, just go to the Unicorn site and check out the configurator module here, and it has a lot of information about the various methods which you can pass into it. So now we can try booting up our Unicorn server with that config. So we can run bundle exec Unicorn to start it up. Now there's also a Unicorn Rails command available, but we don't need to use this since Rails 3 is fully Rack compatible. And then specify our config file to config slash unicorn.rb, and then we'll pass in dash d to uh, make it a demonized process. All right, we didn't get an error message, so it looks like that booted up properly. And then we just need to configure Nginx to proxy pass the request to that Unicorn socket. And I'm actually going to do this through an upstream block here. And we can give it a name, let's call it Unicorn. And then say server and point it to a Unix socket, which will be the one we specified inside of our Unicorn config here. Just pass that on in here. And then it's also a good idea to set the fail timeout here to zero. So that way, in case it times out and takes longer than 30 seconds to respond and the Unicorn process kills it, that it handles that case properly. And then just set the proxy pass here to point to Unicorn, which will point to the upstream right here. And then you'll need to uh, restart Nginx, but once you do, you should be able to visit port 8080, localhost, and looks like it's working, yay. Now the configuration options I've shown you here are really just a bare minimum to get everything up and running, but there are likely other options yet you want to pass into your Nginx config. Now if you go to the Unicorn project on GitHub, you can see that there are several examples of different configurations that you can use, and notice there's an Nginx config that it recommends. And it's very well documented with the comments, so I recommend going through this and, and picking out and choosing what you want to include in your config. For example, there are several proxy options which you should pass into the location block here. I'll just paste those in for setting various headers and turning off the fancy redirect handling on Nginx. A couple of other options to pass are the uh, client max body size, set it really high so the user can send a lot of data if they need, and the keep alive timeout. It suggests setting it to five, but I feel more comfortable with setting it to 10 seconds. You may want to fiddle with this number depending on your situation. And then finally, if you're on a Linux system, you may want to add a deferred option here to use the TCP defer accept option uh, on your listen call here. And don't forget, all these options are well documented in the Nginx wiki, so use that if you have any questions. Now while we're looking through the unicorn examples, another file I want to point out here is the init shell script right here. So this is an example init dscript that we can use to start up and manage our unicorn process. So let's add this script to our server. I'll place it into my application config directory here, and I'll call it unicorn init.shell. And then just paste in the example init script that they provide. Now notice that there are some variables at the top here that they expect you to set, such as slash vagrant for our app root. And then we have the pid path, and that looks correct. But then notice this command here. It expects a full path to our unicorn executable, but we installed that through bundler, so how do we access the unicorn command through that? Well, Bundler has a solution for this. What you can call is bundle install and then pass in bin stubs, and then this will generate a bin directory in your Rails application here. And then we can see that this contains executables for all the gems that Bundler manages here. So we can just run the unicorn command through this. So that means the file is located at app root bin unicorn like that. And then it looks like we have some kind of application specific init config option that allows you to override some options inside of your application, but I don't really need that here because this file itself will act as the application specific init config. There is one more thing we need to change here and that is this script here will run as the root user and therefore Unicorn and our Rails app will run as the root user. 
So if we want to uh, use a different user, what we could do is whenever we run the command, we'll just change into a different user here. Let's say uh, we'll run as Vagrant in this case. So then whenever we call command here, we can just run that command as the Vagrant user or whatever user you want your Rails app to run under. All right, now we can make that script executable. Is that config slash unicorn init dot sh. And then we want to link that up. We have to supply the full path here, vagrant slash config slash unicorn init, and then put it in etsy init d slash, uh, let's call it unicorn. You may want to make it more specific if you have multiple applications that are running in the server. And then you can run that with something like sudo service unicorn, let's just call restart, the way it'll start it up if it's not started already. So now with all of this set up, we could just restart our server and have Nginx and Unicorn boot up automatically for us. However, there is a gotcha with Vagrant, and unfortunately, this won't work, because as you can see, it mounts the slash Vagrant shared folder here, which contains our Rails app and the config options after the virtual machine boots up. So this means when it runs the init scripts, it doesn't have access to those config options. So this means with Vagrant here, we have to start up those services manually after it boots up with sudo service nginx uh, restart and calling restart on unicorn as well. But any other normal server, uh, those should start up automatically as a server starts up because it has access to all the config files. So now with those services started up, just going to port 8080, loads our application just fine. Now you may notice that I've been running this app in development this entire time. But if you want to run it in production environment, it's just a matter of adding the dash capital E option when you're running your unicorn command and saying whatever environment you want, such as production here. I want to make one more quick note here about the bin stubs we set up earlier. And that is if we take a look at one here, such as the unicorn uh, bin stub here, you can see it's using the Ruby command to run this under. Now this works fine for us here because we set a global version when we set up RB environment here. If we want to specify a local version of Ruby to use here in this specific project, such as, let's set it to patch 290 here as well, you can see that this adds a Ruby version file here for that specific version. Now if this local version of Ruby is different from the global version, then you will run into issues when you run this bin file. So to fix this, we can do a quick find and replace here to say wherever we have Ruby environment specified, we can change it to environment Ruby a local exec. And then I just run this on all of the bin files here. Now you can see if we look at that unicorn bin file again, it's using Ruby local exec. So it's going to use the local version of Ruby instead of the global one for this. So this is just something to keep in mind if you're using Ruby environment and using different versions of Ruby for different projects on the same server. Well, that's it for this episode on Nginx and Unicorn, but I haven't been able to cover everything here. One thing in particular you may be interested in is the preload app option in Unicorn. As GitHub explains it in their blog post here, what it does is it reloads the application, your Rails app, before it forks it off to the separate processes. So that way it'll uh, load it up a lot faster if you find yourself with a lot of workers and a large application. There are a couple of other blog posts you may be interested in as well. One titled Everything You Need to Know About Unicorn by Tyler Bird, which just contains a lot of great information on understanding unicorn. Another one I recommend checking out is titled I Like Unicorn Because It's Unix by Ryan Tomeko. And here he does a great job of explaining how unicorn works underneath and how it gets the most out of the Unix kernel. Well, thanks for watching this episode on Nginx and Unicorn. I hope you found it useful. In a future episode, I will show you how to throw Capistrano into the mix for a full deployment solution.